Happy New Year! Start with the beer. Rita had champagne last night. I did not. I don't care for it. She's over there. Anyway, let's get to it. So what I'm going to talk about, others have, but I don't think anybody's actually shown what to use. So filing for my Vitam 11 visa. Hopefully that comes out straight. It does. I'll show it all in pictures as we go along here. Uh, my family based ties to get my permanent visa to reside full time in Brazil. I am retiring soon. I'm not announcing when because it's a secret, but the work people will find out. <laughs> go along here. I'm going to go through the different pieces of paper. I'll show them either up here by the liquor bottles or up here. Let's get started. I uploaded the, what do you call it? The embassy in Miami will only allow you like five megabytes of space to upload all the required documents. At first I uploaded not paying attention. Then it's like, you've taken up too much space. And I'm like, I still have four more things to upload. How am I going to do that? One, put everything in PDF format and shrink it down to a medium size, like 50 to 200 kilobytes each. I'm sending this to my, the consulate that services my area. We're up in Boca Raton. I'm sending it to Miami. Your consulate, while the requirements will be very similar, I actually drove myself crazy doing it, trying to get the different, uh, like this thing, right? Okay, my wife called last week and we got the email. So I sent that, got the correct list of what we need. So there's a consulate in LA. I think there's one in Texas. I know there's one in Chicago and New York. But anyway, you got to find the one that services your area. Okay, very good. Cheers, number two. The first thing you're going to need is your visa request form signed with a recent passport size picture attached. You don't get that until you upload everything. All right. Bring along with all of your documents when it's time to go. Uh, Once you upload all of the documents to their server, we'll either approve or deny and say, hey, by the way, you're missing this, that, and the next thing, or this is incorrect. And from there, they send you a link and then you request an appointment. I got a link, I hit that link, and I requested an appointment. Boom, it gave you the days and the hours, and it was, there was one available the next morning at 10.30, and I took it, and we were there on the 3rd. I'll look over my documents and say, yeah, yeah, they look good, and we'll move on from there, but we'll see, right? The second thing it mentions in here is passport. If you don't know how to get a passport, go to your local United States Postal Office they send it in for you that's how it's done unless you're close to like a uh, passport agency miami's got a huge one however the easiest way if you have time just you can download the form online just go to u.s department of state fill it up mail it in along with a check or money order i'm not sure which one it is very simple but if you can't figure that out you're never going to figure this out if you're an illegal alien living in the united states you're not gonna be able to do this sorry an undocumented person so if you're from greece and you're here in america in an undocumented status you're not gonna be able to go through this the next thing your birth certificate. It's got to be your, your original birth certificate. Not like the original, but you have to get it from your state. Uh, well, a certification of birth will work. That, right? And yes, I was born in the great cheese state of Wisconsin. And then you're going to need one of these. Birth certificate has to be apostolized. And I don't even know if that's the word. So it's got something to do with the Hague Convention from like, like 1960s. This one is from the state of Wisconsin. I think it cost me 20 bucks or something, plus a return envelope. So I had to send my birth certificate up there to Wisconsin from Florida. I did this back in 2020. Update. The apostle on your birth certificate is good for many years. However, the apostle that you will get on your FBI background check is not good for years. That was in Madison and they certify it for a specific country. So you can't get it one and you're done. If this is certified specifically for Brazil. That's what it looks like. All right, big special looking and whole proof of residence. If you're someone that moves around a lot, it, this is gonna be a pain in the ass for you because a lot of people never change their driver's license, which you need to. If you move a lot, you couch surf, it's not that it can't be done, but you will have to prove through utility bills like your electric, internet, and TV. Cell service doesn't count because you can do that to a PO box, but it's gotta be a utility, electric, water, something like that. All right, the next is marriage certificate. If you are in the United States, we got married down in Miami. We took that, well, Rita did a few years ago, took it to a carterio in Brazil and registered our marriage. So we're just, this has been translated on a carterio 
or uh, if it was done at an embassy in the United States, that, that will work as well. All right, copy of your Brazilian spouses, her Brazilian ID, which she just got a brand new one. When we moved, here, little side, side, little street thing here, right? Which I, I'm good at, you can ask Rita. I like to go off on tangents, I got that from my mom. When we got married, she just kept her old ID. They get an ID at 18, it's a national ID, and it's good forever. But if you get married, you should get a change to your new name. Had that, and she just did that last May, I think, because we moved. We sold our house, filled a container, and we needed everything in the proper name for her to go and accept it all in Brazil. Or her passport, but her passport is expired. It's been expired for like three years, and everything just went Got closed, went to hell. Everything was difficult, nobody knew anything. It's a new world. We used her brand new national ID, which is one of the, so it says spouse's Brazilian ID or passport, proof of Brazilian citizenship. When we went to the consulate in Miami, have them review the original documents. Gentleman that does the uh, visas needed to review Rita's passport as well. So we needed not only her national ID card, but her passport. Two documents with her picture that are in a driver's license doesn't count from Brazil. You're going to need those. Even though it was expired, he looked at it, reviewed it, and he understood it was expired and why. Then you have the spouse's declaration G compromisso main subsistence. It's wrong. Declaração Conjunto, Conjunta, what is it? Declaração Conjunta de Residencia no Brasil. It's a, uh, oh, it's a declaration that we live together. You don't have to get that one notarized, but we did anyway, just in a car, so I copy my passport. Uh, background check. This is a big one. It's Sunday. It's 11 o'clock. Rita wants in mimosas. Jeez. Yep, daddy's a little helper right here. Hey, opa, five o'clock somewhere. So I'm reading on the Facebook forum for specifically expats in Brazil. Oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? If you one, two, three, four, five, the different steps you need, there's probably more than five. You need to know is this is to only get your Vitam 11 visa. It's good for one year. You have one year from the date of issue. So I have one year from January 4th to go to Brazil, check in with the Policia Federal, and from there, that visa can transition into residence, okay, where you can stay long-term, but it's up to them, keep that in mind, how long they're gonna give you. It's not guaranteed 10 years, five years, it's, it's Brazil. What happened an hour ago could be different procedures with the new person. Cost me $290. Keeping in mind, when you upload all your documents to the consulate, you will need that $290 money order from the United States Postal Office to upload proof that you have it. Because in the past, I know many people that have showed up in line and they don't have it, they're scrambling, they wanna pay cash with credit card, not acceptable. Only United States Postal uh, money order. Criminal background check. Turns out I have no crimes in my life. I didn't commit any, I'm 54. That's the place, all right? Let's talk about the background check. So the Florida background check, the FCIC through FDLE, will allow you to get your visa, the Vitam 11 visa for through the family reunion visa, but it will not allow you, may not, I should say, allow you to get your residency when you present your passport with the visa in it to the Policia Federal in Brazil. That's still an unknown. So I was under the impression I would be able to use my Florida background check for where I've lived for the last year. It may pass according to the visa officer that helped us in Miami, but he just kind of did like a maybe. Speaking with Mike Becker over on the expats forum, on you need your FBI background check, which is very fast. It's the apostyle process that takes a long time. And I'm talking everything stateside. I'm not talking if you're in Brazil and you want to do this process. You need to get your FBI background check, which it, that t literally took me less than an hour. I went online, I paid a fee to a company. They hook you up with a fingerprint agency and there happens to be one about three miles from me. I went there, got my fingerprints done. By the time I got back home, I had my background checked in my mailbox and it's secure and all that. But now I need to take that and send it to the U.S. State Department. Current backlog is 
17 to 22 weeks to get that apostille. So that's where we're at with that. But all that first emailed, then I get that first piece of paper, right? That had my photo on it and all of, it had like a barcode on the bottom and some personal information. You print that out, you wait for a response. And obviously it's January 1st, 2023, Sunday. They're probably not gonna look at it tomorrow, maybe, but this week they review it. Get your stuff real organized before you start this process because I got timed out three times by their system while I'm digging around. And you're also gonna need two passport pictures, one for this piece of paper and one to bring with you that they'll, I don't know what they're gonna do with it. I guess put it on your uh, visa and laminate it into your passport, but you need two empty pages in your passport for that. And sweet. Recap, you need your passport. You need two photos. You need your birth certificate, apostolized. You need your marriage certificate, but it has to be registered either at the embassy or in Brazil at a carterio, okay? To prove that you're married both in America and in Brazil. Spouse's declaration de compromiso, your affidavit of support. That needs to be notarized. Or declaration conjunta de residencia, spelling, pronunciation. But it just means that you live together. You're gonna need your background check, FBI. You can use your state, but that's only gonna get you the visa portion. And remember, this is all just to get the visa. The residence happens later. This can be transitioned into a residence. Your proof of residence using your driver's license or a utility bill, the $290 current cost as of 2023, United States Postal Money Order, and the electronic visa application form. Find the website that corresponds to the consulate for you. I'm in Florida, I use the Miami consulate. If you're in California, probably LA, Illinois, or Wisconsin, you're gonna go to Chicago, okay? And just like that, through the magic of television, I got my visa. It's a visa, it's not residence. So when I get to Brazil, I will have to report within the first 90 days of my first arrival within one year of the January 4th until next January 3rd to arrive within country and present this to the Policia Federal through their system to transfer this to residency. That's it for now. Cheers. Questions? Ask.